This is the Serial at Midnight Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Serial at Midnight Podcast. My name is Heath Holland and I've got another really huge conversation. I've got a really big show for you this week. We're talking to Robert Blair, the president and CEO of VCI Entertainment. Now, this is a rare treat because it's not often we get to talk to the president of a company. Uh, this is a huge honor for Serial at Midnight. I don't take it lightly. I'm super grateful to Mr. Blair for his time and for being as honest and forthright as he was. Uh, this is such an approachable interview, guys. We're going to talk about so many things that I know you want to hear discussed. We talk about Santo, uh, the Wonderful box set, but that is also controversial. We've talked about this in the past. You get the answers about the Santo box set straight from Mr. Blair here. Also other Spanish language, uh, Mexican films. That's a topic of conversation here. Robert Rodriguez is involved in the mix. It goes deep, guys. Uh, you don't want to miss it. We're also talking about VCI's commitment commitment to serials. You know, I'm a huge serials fan. They've released over 100. Going back to the tape days. Here, well, actually, here's the thing that comes out in this interview is that VCI is older than home media as we know it. They're certainly older than discs. They're also older than tapes. They're older than the Betamax market, you guys. Uh, we're talking about 50 plus years in the business and how that business has changed, distributing movies for different audiences. They've been there since the beginning. Uh, it's a really, really interesting history of the company. We're going to find all about, about it here. For the serial fans out there, there are some interesting teases and some exclusive, uh, some information that comes out in this conversation that you do not want to miss. We also talk about BCI's entry, their, their entree into the 4K Ultra HD markets with uh, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things, which is their very first 4K. What are the challenges of 4K right now? As the Blu-ray market sort of evolves into a 4K market or Blu-ray collectors start collecting 4K, what is that? how does that work for a smaller company like VCI that's not affiliated with, you know, uh, millions and millions in capital and uh, is relatively, uh, you know, a, bo a boutique is what we're talking about. For a boutique company to enter the 4K market right now, what does that look like? We find out in this conversation. Also... Uh, classics, you know, I'm a huge Golden Age Hollywood fan. They have a partnership deal, a collaboration with the Mary Pickford Company to preserve some silent classics and some other things in the Mary Pickford uh, vaults, the Mary Pickford Library. There's something for everybody here. So I am really excited for uh, this conversation. I hope you enjoy it. Without further ado, Robert Blair, the president and CEO of BCI Entertainment. One of the things that I'm interested in with VCI is that the company's been around for a really, really long time. I, now, I have, I wanted to show you this. So this is something that one of my viewers sent me. This is the old V, this is 19, copyright 1990. Uh, so this yeah. was at least, you know, 33 years ago. Tell me about kind of the history of the company. Well, the the company was founded by my father, Bill Blair. Uh, he he started back in the early 60s as a uh, in the non-theatrical film business. This is uh, he was distributing 16 millimeter films uh, that some he he owned and some, you know, most were licensed from the major studios and independent uh, producers of the time. And that was the for the non-theatrical market, which included, you know, schools, churches, prisons, ships at sea, airlines, uh, everything uh, that was not a, th a theatrical showing. And that's, you know, th that was the only way at that time that, uh, that you know, a regular consumer could, uh, could watch, you know, you know, any of these movies. And then... He continued to to acquire films and, and licensed films. Uh, and then in the mid 70s, when Sony invented the Betamax and was doing a lot of pro consumer type video equipment, uh, my dad saw, you know, a future for selling movies on on the cassettes. And so that's what got us into the, the home video business 
we were selling some of our movies on three quarter inch umatic, which was a you know a broadcast uh, cassette back in back in the days. Uh, we started transferring movies over to video to to service the the uh, cable industry, which was j just you know getting ramped up at that time. Uh, and we provided, you know, movies for, for local uh, cable companies. Uh, then Beta, and then Sony came out with the Betamax, and that's when Dad said, "All right, we can we can really uh, put movies on these little little plastic cassettes and, and be able to sell them at a at a reasonable price." Uh, and then, of course, VHS came along shortly thereafter. Uh, and even though VHS was a inferior format, it it uh, it soon whipped beta, you know, in its butt, and you know became the, the standard. And as more uh, studios got involved in the in, in the home video market, it you know the well, everybody knows, you know the, the you know what happened. There's practically every block in America had a had a video store, Blockbuster, you know, included. And, you know, that was uh those were really, you know, the heydays of, of the home video market. And then I guess around what was it, 2000, uh 1999 to or two year 2000, then DVD, you know, launched. And that was like a a rocket ship. And you know, because mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you know, it 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 started to switch from a rental business over to a collection collectible business, and people were, were buying DVDs. And you know, that's uh, it's it's been a huge market. It's unfortunately slowed down some, but uh, it uh, it now the the true film buffs, collectors, you know, are still buying and particularly box sets and special editions, you know, with a lot of uh, extra uh, bonus features and things like that and fancy packaging. So, you know, it's, there will always be, you know, a physical market, but uh, that's, uh, it's here to stay. So, and now we're, we, you know, we're, we were in. Uh, we've launched a, our own streaming channel, and we're we're doing a lot of distribution uh, to other streaming platforms. So the the digital the digital business is uh, really has really begun to take off. So, so what know, kind of things can people find on the streaming service? What kind of uh, movies, serials, TV, any TV shows? We have shows? lots of movies, lots of old serials. We have a lot of uh, westerns. Uh, we've got a couple of partners that are supplying with programming uh, that have pretty deep libraries as well. So we're we have a lot of uh, of Euro cult classics uh spaghetti westerns and you know uh giallo and you know horror titles you know of, of uh from from the european market uh we have we've been obtaining licensing a lot of uh classic mexican uh movies uh some of the top 100 films you know ever that ever came out of uh, Mexico, uh, we see that as a as a huge market. Uh, you know, there's I don't know how many. I think I heard the other day that there are like 60 million uh, Spanish speaking people living in America now. So that's that's a huge market that uh, you know I think has been kind of underserved. Uh, and then you know we have our own uh, horror titles that uh, you know we've we've accumulated and even you know produced back in the 80s you know as part of our uh our streaming channel part you know so some of our deep library titles so you know we've got uh we really have all kinds all kinds of movies all kinds of 
genres. We even have some religious movies and, and family family oriented movies, uh, as well as we have some uh, R rated uh, and kind of sexy movies too. So we we try to. You know, satisfy everybody's taste you just sold some subscriptions right there i could hear the clicks through the <laughs> through this video people like click click um yeah you know what's interesting is that you I, so you guys have been in the physical media your home media for you know at least 50 years because you talked about the 70s um what we're learning now th there was this whole shift to streaming and now what we're learning is that the people streaming and physical media go hand in hand they're they, they can work together and i think for you know, you're seeing that too, probably is that people can try something, they can stream something to experiment, to discover. And that's not a substitute for ownership, but it can be a doorway to ownership if somebody really likes something. So you're giving people options, you're giving them, you know, um, different platforms to experience the the material the way they want to. And right. I think that's that's valuable, right? Because it's it's important that it's not one or the other, it's whatever works best for the customer. Right. It doesn't have to be, you know, one or the other. And and yeah. you're right. Go, they go hand in hand. You you'll you'll be you'll get to see things that uh, that uh, haven't been available on DVD. Uh, in fact, we've we some of the the, the Mexican titles that we've we've licensed uh, we've li we licensed only digital rights. So uh, we don't have the the right to to uh, to put them on physical media, but that's that's few and far between. But it, you know, it, it still exposes the the or the consumer has the choice of watching something that, that wouldn't readily uh, be available from you know anybody else or any other source. So you opened a door that, and it's a natural door for me to go down. So let's talk about Santo because I wore my Santo shirt for you. Uh, <laughs> this is it looks good this, on you too. This is a great, thank you. This is a great release because it is uh, restorations, you know, like high definition restorations of, um, you know, eight films that have been very hard to get uh, recently in the U.S. market, especially in high definition. But there's been controversy around this because they do not have um, original Spanish audio. And now I've I know, I've made a video about this I and I it was one of the the few videos in the history of my channel where I had to make a follow up video about it to say like hey here's what's going on can you talk to me just a little bit about why these don't have um, the original Mexican audio tracks Yeah we we originally uh, uh, licensed these titles uh, back uh, uh, around twenty. 12, I think it was, and we came out with uh, all all the same titles that were on that uh, on this collection, plus you know a lot of other uh, Mexican horror films, uh, and they most of them only had Spanish tracks at that time. Uh, after our license expired, we went back to the produ the producers in Mexico. Uh, and uh, tried to relicense the, the Spanish versions, and they uh, had sold the, the the rights to the Spanish titles to another company. Uh, and you know, but they retained the. They said, if you want to produce uh, these for uh, in English, you can. Uh, and all and really, that was prompted by uh, El Rey Network. Uh, and the uh, oh, the the big director, uh, help me out there, Robert Rodriguez. Robert Rodriguez, uh, he wanted he was with the one of the people behind the El Rey network, which was you know a new cable network that was aimed at the Latino market and really at a at a younger market uh you know of latin people uh who maybe spoke a little bit of spanish but you know they primarily had grown up and, and learned learned english so he wanted he wanted to showcase mexican cinema but he wanted to make it more uh approachable you know by creating english tracks so 
we did that. Uh, the uh, but that's that's the only thing we we could release at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully at some point I will be able to to re license those Spanish tracks and and then we'll make those available. But uh, if uh, there's probably a lot of those that, that could be found on the on the used market, and they might even find some new if they're if they're still interested because we sold a lot but uh in in the spanish dvds well one thing the i should mention that, i'm sorry go ahead no go ahead well and we could also talk about um the uh the aztec mummy collection you've got k gordon murray dubs or uh where possible and i i appreciate that because that's like this vintage it, it lets me know that you know I think for any customer that's curious about these and they see the presence of a K. Gordon Murray dub, that lets them know you knew what was going on. It's not like you threw this together slapdash. You did everything you could to make it as complete as possible because those dubs go back to, oh, 60, 60 years or so ago. You know, those, mm -hmm. those are when they first were brought to the American market. And I love those dubs, by the way. Those were really good dubs. Uh, K. Gordon yeah. Murray, I think he, he had a sound studio that, uh, did all the dubbing for these, and you know they, they were really uh, they were really talented uh, at what they do. It's you know it's not easy it's not an easy job, uh, but uh, yeah they they ranked very highly you know in making these dubs. Uh, probably a little bit better than the than the studio we hired to do the the new Santo ones, but you know I mean. Santo is, they're kind of goofy movies anyway. Yeah. Uh, and I'm probably going to offend somebody out there, but, you know, really they're, uh, they are what they are. They, you know, the, he, Santo is a huge international hero, uh, but mm -hmm. come on, some of those, some of those movies are kind of, kind of cheesy. So uh, I think that the, uh, the dubbing kind of uh, reflects, you know, that kind of flavor. And uh, besides that, Robert Rodriguez uh, approved it and loves it. And so that, you know, I'll go with that. Yeah, there you go. That's the real seal of approval that you needed is Robert Rodriguez's. Right, right. Uh, is there any, I know you talked about the streaming service having some Mexican movies that aren't on disc. Do you have any more things like this coming to disc in the near future that you can maybe talk about? Oh yes. Uh I, in fact I had a um a Mexican producer in my office yesterday. Uh David Agar Sanchez. His his family owns a huge library of, of titles. Uh and we're negotiating for a, a new package of films, including uh some Santo and some Blue Demon and some other, you know, he's they have a lot of, of wrestling films which you know these are will be uh only spanish language where we probably won't dub those unless el rey comes around and, and wants to yeah have some in english but so they'll they'll have the original spanish language with english you know subtitles so everybody uh, that complained about the dubs have to show up for the original audio tracks, right? Put your money where yeah. your mouth is. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Okay, great. Um, you talk about Westerns. You know, when I think of VCI, uh, Westerns and cereals are the two things that I think VCI has put out more than any other company in the home media market. Uh, and I love it. I've, I've got so many here. I mean, I, here's just, this is like half of my stack here. And I, I you know, we've got Tailspin Tommy, uh the phantom red the, hey the the re original red rider buck jones the original uh red rider cereal westerns cereals what is it that makes you guys such a good fit for that material because i'm telling you like when i th th you guys have like a, a stamp on that market yeah well you know that was uh my dad's fault he was uh, <laughs> you know as a as a kid, you know, he loved movies and uh, he, he he loved Saturday matinee serials, grew up with them. Um, Westerns, he was a big Western movie fan, a lot, a lot of B-Westerns. So 
Mm -hmm. uh, naturally, he, he gravitated to acquiring, you know, more and more of those. And, you know, at first I uh, was hesitant for the, the, the home market, but I, I soon learned that there, there's a huge following for these things. Um, when I was a, a kid and dad was just starting his the non-theatrical business, uh, he had he made it one of his first deal, big deals with Universal Pictures and became uh, at one point he was he he was the biggest uh, distributor of uh, Universal titles for the for the uh, non-theatrical market. So we had access to all of the uh, the Flash Gordon serials and Buck Rogers things. And as kids, we grew up you know, watching those, you know, every weekend, we'd, we'd put on, you know, several of these things. So those things I love. Buster Crab, you know, was was Flash Gordon, and he was also Buck Rogers. Yeah. Uh, luckily, my dad, you know, he was, my dad became friends with Buster Crab over the years, and uh, uh, so actually, we got to meet him. He came in, and we did some some uh shot some video and film of him and uh wow. so you know we just that started it and you know we've we've kept it going and uh we're negotiating or we're starting to negotiate and i probably shouldn't say it but uh <laughs> we're hoping to don't get in trouble hoping, hoping that uh we'll be able to release the Flash Gordon's set, uh, all three of those in, uh, in Blu-ray, you know. Okay, well, now you say that, but like a year ago, I saw something pop up on the website, and it was like, big news coming, or something like that, and it was a picture of Flash and, yeah. and, uh, and Dale, and I was like, what? I've, I've been waiting for the announcement for at least a year now, so this is kind of sort of maybe an announcement. Well, you know, we got, we went through the whole pandemic yeah thing and uh you know so a lot of a lot of hollywood was uh uh took a hiatus and uh so it, you know a lot of a lot of business didn't get done you know like we wanted so would they be restored i watched them i watched the first flash gordon again about six months ago and it needs mm -hmm. to be saved it's in bad shape Oh yeah, we we will uh, uh, as long as they still have good film elements, we'll go in and do 4K uh, right. restorations, and uh, they uh, uh, we've been able to uh, acquire a lot of uh, uh, film negatives in in nit in uh, even nitrate uh, negatives in uh, fine grain prints. Uh, from Universal's vault, and you know, it, they're stunning. You know, when you, when you, when you, even in just high definition, you know, wow. but, uh, 4K. We're we're starting to do some of some of those in 4K, and it, and they're really beautiful. You know, they've never been seen like that. So, yeah, it's some of that stuff. It's just, I worry now at this point without the efforts of people like you and maybe a handful of other companies that are looking towards the deep past, I'm worried that some of this stuff is just going to literally disintegrate and well, be lost. Yeah, that's that's one of our biggest fears too. Um, you know, the studios for most of them, you know, I've uh, that I've talked to, you know, they if it's not uh, you know, a classic movie to them is something from the 90s or you know yeah. the early 2000s uh and i mean literally they I, I, they've told me that it's not worth their effort to mm -hmm. to even write a write up a contract you know for some of these older titles and i i don't understand it but uh you know that that's the attitude of some of them and so, don't ask i'm not, I'm not going to tell you which one you can tell me after we finish recording and I'll yeah, be like, okay. oh, that's all, all right. About right. <laughs> so let me ask you about this. So uh, you've recently, we've got the Green Hornet coming to Blu-ray. Uh, it's in April, I believe is the release date for that. Yes. Can you tell me the, how did that go about? Did you, were you able to have access to original film elements or to, just tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we, 
we license those. It's uh, Universal, you know, produced those back in 1940, I believe, 41. Um, and they licensed the character rights from uh, the Green Hornet company. Uh, and when their contract was up, uh, the the all the rights uh, went back to the Green Hornet Company. So we we licensed it uh, a few years ago from the Green Hornet Company, uh, and then uh, just in the last uh, three years, uh, Universal turned over all those negatives and prints and everything on on those. So we did them originally uh, in just HD. And so now we're going back and doing and, and redoing them in, in 2K and 4K and, and uh, for release reissue. Excellent. So they're, I mean, they they look outstanding. Do you, off the top of your head, do you know how many serials the company has released just in the history of the company? I mean, it's dozens and dozens. It's over a hundred. Uh, wow. And, you know, we're, we're still looking for more. Uh, there's, there's, some uh, like the original Lone Ranger uh, was mm -hmm. produced by Republic Pictures. Uh, that has uh, apparently it it was uh, based on a on a radio program that uh, the and I can't think of his name, but the the, the guy that created the the, the Green Hornet. Uh, Let's see. Uh, George character. W. Trendle. That's right, George W. Trendle. Uh, he made the deal with the Republic to to produce that the Lone Ranger serial, and then and I think they did a Lone Ranger Returns. Uh, and he hated it, George Trendle. He hated it, and and as soon as his you know his contract expired, uh, I've heard that he had the all the negatives uh, destroyed. So the only thing available out there today is very poor uh, copies that have Spanish subtitles burned into them, which is, you know, for uh, Spanish, it's it's great, but for... Yeah. Uh, that's all that survives? That's all that survived. Uh. Uh, that was that was one of the holy grail of my dad. He he really wanted to find that, and we've we've searched the world to see if you know if there's anything else. But I noticed this a lot with uh, some of the westerns too, because I I like to do I, I usually watch a western on Saturday mornings. That's my it's kind of taken over. You know, when I was a kid, I watched Saturday morning cartoons. Mm -hmm. Now I watch a western on Saturday morning, and uh, I've, I've often from your from your company, and you know, I noticed that with a lot of these things. Um, aftermarket companies have chopped off if it was, uh, you know, I'm trying to think who was the, there's one company in particular, it's my memory's failing. They've chopped off the studio credits and added their own. That it was for when they were sold into television in like 1958. Yeah. It, yeah. Their originals were destroyed. And so now all we yeah. have is this, the, the, like the messed with version. That's tragic. Right. That's that unfortunately happened a lot back yeah. uh, during the, the early TV days, and it was, you know, they'd cut out a lot of the recaps and things like that, and change the opening credits, and mm -hmm. you know, so they they kind of bastardized, you know, a lot of those. So we always try uh, going, you know, with the full original, uncut, we leave everything in there. We made the mistake early on; some of the first serials that we were released uh, on VHS, we thought. Um, in fact, I think it was some of the early releases of Dick Tracy. We went in and thought we were doing a favor and cut out a lot of the, you know, the recaps. And, uh -huh. and the, we got so much crap from from you did. collectors that torches we, and pitchforks. Yeah, we knew uh, we knew that was a boom. And this was before social media too, so that's yeah. how you know it was bad. Yeah, yeah. When you're, <laughs> they're calling you up and screaming at you in the in the phone, it's you wow. know you goofed. So, yeah, 
Yeah, we want them complete. I, but here's the thing that I know about you is that I know you're happy to carry on the legacy of your dad with the Westerns and the serials. But I also know that your heart is really in releases like Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. I know you're a horror guy. Talk to me a little bit about, is this the first 4K from VCI? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's, what what led to that decision to like, hey, let's get into 4K? Well, be, to make money. I mean, it's I risky love, though. I it's love risky, movies. Yeah. But, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta make money if I can keep doing what I'm doing. So, but for, uh, isn't for, isn't the production cost of 4K so much higher than the production cost of it, anything? Else? Yeah. It's, it was a shock. You know, I, I was told that it, that it was expensive, but, you know, it was a shock. Uh, and so we have, we will be very particular about what we do in the, in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, kudos to some of these guys like uh, um, Vinegar Syndrome and, and the Shout Factory Aero Films that are you know doing you know yeah. bunches of these 4K releases. Uh, but uh, uh, well, it's a collector's market, and this is a really collector friendly release because you've got it's a three disc set. You've got one ultra hd disc you've got two blu-ray discs and it's absolutely loaded with uh with special features it's, you've got a 90, yes. 90 minute documentary on here uh multiple uh i mean it's, it goes on and on and on so and it's got reversible artwork and i think there's three pieces of artwork on it so i know you you uh oh, a booklet too i should mention there's also a booklet as well so i know that you've really the collector market is what's supporting a lot of this stuff so um, that's key, and you you do seem to have made that with the collector market in mind. Absolutely, I mean we've we've been lucky to distribute that film for many many years, going back to the non theatrical days, uh, and it's it's always been a you know very popular and a big seller for us. It's you know one of our top selling films, and and we've released it on you know everything from VHS to DVD and now uh blue well blu-ray and then we did a, a this new 4K it kind of feels so, like the flag one of the flagship movies of VCI to be honest with you it, well, yeah it really is it it is um and uh you know dark star is another one you know yep. that we that uh we you know I personally love that movie I think it's it's incredibly clever and well done for virtually you know zippity do on the budget <laughs> you guys have uh, also so, been really good with uh regional horror you know i because I, I know because you're a horror guy you've brought a lot of regional horror titles there's the the double features there like didn't you guys put out the dark power um yep yeah yep. yeah dark power that director only made two movies, I think, and you, I think you put both of them out on. Uh, we did, yeah. yeah, we did. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, there's a lot of movies, uh, independent productions, small, you know, little producers making film. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them, you know, never get to be seen, you know, outside of you know some regional showings, maybe. But yeah. so we, you know, but. The thing is, some of them are very well done, very good, and uh, so we 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 seek those out and uh, you know try to uh, make them available. Well, horror fans just want something new, you know. They just want to see something they haven't seen before. And going back to the video store era, which you referenced, I mean, there was something magical about walking the aisles of a video store and you see this box art, and you're like, "What is this? This looks interesting." The movie rarely lived up to that cover art, but that wasn't the point. The point was you got to see something that was fun and something that was different. And and to your point, you know, regional stuff was limited to a very specific market. But now, you know, like a territory, one area of the country or mm -hmm. now we're able to, you know, you, thanks to you and people like you, we get to see these movies that were never made in our area, but that live on through home media, through the streaming service as well, because I know a lot of this stuff is on the streaming service too. Um, as to, I think that's great. It's my goal. You know, I, I love home media, um, but my ultimate passion is for movies and pop culture. And as long as we're talking about it and watching it, you know, and that this stuff doesn't die, that it continues to live. That's really what gets me excited. So thank you for everything that you do to, you know, to, to keep it alive. 
Well, thank you. Appreciate that. You know, they, we do it because we we're passionate about movies and we love to preserve them. You know, for for future generations. Uh, so you know, it, it is nice to to have a job where where you love going to work every day. And uh, so I I feel blessed. You know. Not that we don't sometimes make mistakes, but you know that's uh, well, we, we try do. to correct them. You know when yeah. we can. So, did you plan to pick up where your dad? You know, did you plan to take this up after your dad? Was this something you always wanted to do, or oh you yeah, something well you know, I, I, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a doctor, and you know who knows, but uh, you know I went to work for dad, uh, and. Well, I, I worked part time for the company for you know several years, uh, sweeping the floors and, and uh, working in the film lab because uh, we we also besides the non theatrical film library we had we had our own film lab wet film, so we could make prints and copies of, of you know the movies for the film library. So that was my first job, and in 2022. Uh, the lab manager moved uh, to, I think, Albany, New York, to run one of our uh, film exchanges. And Dad said, "You want to come, you know, manage the film lab?" And I said, "Yeah." And that was the same year I got married, so it, it was uh, it was nice. And so I took took the job, and you know, from there I I worked my way up. You know, we went through the film, starting in the film lab and then moving over to the non-theatrical film exchange there in Tulsa. And uh, in 1979, I uh, went to the first CES show uh, to, you know, w where we really launched uh, the uh, into the home video market. And... Uh, Ever since, you know, I, I love it. I love it. I, you know, I can't imagine, you know, doing anything else. Nobody can predict what the future holds, but because you've been doing this for as long as you have, do you have any thoughts about maybe the next five years about where this, if, 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 this streaming, you know, take over? Does do, do discs make a huge resurgence? You know, two, what was it 2003 to 2008? Maybe was this huge disc, uh, you know, you'd walk into Walmart and there'd just be aisles of this stuff. Oh, I remember yeah. Best Buy. Oh man, Best Buy was like a toy store for guys like me. But of course, now yeah. it's not in there at all, really. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I wished I had a crystal ball, but mm -hmm. I think you know we're probably going to see some more changes. Uh, but I'm, uh, you know, you look at what's going on with the twelve-inch vinyl you know, how it, it's made such a huge comeback. Uh, I think, you know, the, the, the DVD, Blu-ray, or, you know, they're not going to, they're, they'll not ever go away, I don't think. Uh, and, I, you know, I'm hoping that maybe we'll see a little bit more of a resurgence. Um, you know, I think, you know, Amazon has become the, the go-to place for, for buying a lot of uh, physical uh DVDs because it, it, they have virtually unlimited, you know, access or, or inventory. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there's other companies that you know specialize in horror or you know genre, you know, type titles that uh, also you know do a lot of mail order business. So I think uh, streaming is going to you know continue. I see a lot of um, targeting you know certain niches. Uh, so you, you, some of these, uh, I mean, the big studio companies are going to, are going to fight it out. And I think, you know, you may see some of those, uh, uh, merge, but, uh, I see a lot of other smaller independent, you know, uh, companies come, uh, start up in, on the streaming side. And I see them, you know, really focusing on, you know, one or two genres and uh uh i think that's that's probably a good thing that's 
we're kind of doing that with with our channel, but uh, focusing mainly on you know good high quality films, whether they're from the silent age to you know current titles, uh, and you know heavy emphasis on you know cliffhangers, serials, uh, horror, science fiction you know, in foreign international, you know, releases. So uh, anyway, that's that's kind of what I think is going to happen. You mentioned silent. I, I should also reference that BCI has been working with the Mary Pickford Company for some silent titles. Uh, really well done restorations with uh, library, the Library of Congress, providing materials and and there's booklets there's i mean really really nice archival editions of these movies could you talk to me a little bit about that well we uh back i think it was like around 2019 just before the pandemic we we got an introduction to to the mary pickford company uh we were we had announced that we were going to release uh, Rain, and we were going to do a four case uh, edition. Uh, and unfortunately, after we got the scan back, we realized that we had a a cut version of of the movie. And so I started reaching out to different uh, archives uh, to find some additional uh, uh, film material and called. Uh, the Library of Congress, and they said, "Oh yeah, we we have a full, un, you know, uncut uh, nitrate uh, fine grain on the film." And I said, "Wow, how you know how can I access it?" And they said, "Well, the material is actually owned by the Mary Pickford Company, but here's here's the name of the lady, and you should reach out." So I reached out to, to her. She was very uh, very nice, very smart lady. Uh, and she, she was, she knew about our company. She knew, you know, that we, we uh, did, a, you know, a pretty decent job of restoring and, and releasing, you know, classic movies. So she said, yeah, we'll work with you and uh, I'll give you permission. So that's how we started. And then shortly after that, there, there was a little bit of a gap because of the pandemic again. But uh, when we got back together, she said, we're doing a lot of res restoration of Mary Pickford's films, and we'd like for you to distribute them. So I, you know, I, I was flabbergasted. Uh, I think, you know, that Mary Pickford is, you know, America's sweetheart. And, uh, you know, Mary, the Mary Pickford Foundation is, you know, uh, has a little bit of a, a prestige, you know, attached to it. So I, I was very fortunate. So yeah, we, we've hopped on, we're, you know, they, uh, they, we're getting ready. I mean, we've got several other films uh, scheduled to be released this year. Great. Uh, and, you know, we're not only are we doing uh, Mary Pickford titles where she was, she, where she starred, but they also, uh, she also produced, mm -hmm. you know, several movies with other major stars, uh, and uh, which a lot of those haven't, you know, really been seen or seen in, in good uh, uh, copies, you know, for years and years. So we're, we're uh, very fortunate to have made that connection. And I think, you know, I, it, it's it's incredible they you're very right they do a they do an amazing job of restoration um and so we're we're very pleased and they did an amazing job on the restoration you did an amazing job putting the whole package together because these are really prestigious releases yeah. well I've, I've got a pull quote on the uh there's a press thing for rain and i'm on the the pull i got a pull quote on that that's going you on sure did. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Serial of Indite approved. Yeah. Hey, Great. and the check checks in the mail. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Well, did I leave any stone unturned? I want to be very respectful of your time, but is there something else that you want to cover or talk about? Well, we, you know, as you know, maybe we 
we kind of kickstarted the whole made for uh, home video movie market back in 1985 when we we uh, produced here in Tulsa uh, the movie Blood Blood Cult, uh, which was shot on video, very 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 low budget, uh, but has uh, became a huge hit in the in the video days. Uh, we when it first came out, we had we re released it on uh, beta and VHS. So that tells you you know mm -hmm. how how old that was. But uh, that followed. Uh, we we produced a total of eight films. Uh, once uh, you know the studios and the other major independents saw what we had done, I mean they jumped on it and started producing their own and. Of course, they, they, you know, we were pre producing for uh, way, way under a million dollars, but these guys were coming out and spending huge amounts, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, so we decided, well, we'll just focus on the catalog business and, and 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 leave this to the guys that had deep pockets. So, but being being that, I have now thought about getting back into the uh, production business uh not so much that we're going to have a studio here but we're going to we'll finance and, and uh, work with some of the independent uh producers that uh, that are making films today and uh, wow. we still own some scripts that you know that we've we've had for years and uh, some are would still be uh make some good films so We'll see. That's exciting. Very exciting. Well, hey, you've got the distribution platform. You've got the streaming service. Now, if you can make the movies to put on the service, you have it all covered. Yeah, yeah. We're kind of like a mini uh, studio here. So wow. I guess that makes me a mini mogul. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your honesty and your just your transparency, your forthright answers. Uh, I think there's a lot here for people to to learn and to listen to and a lot for us to get excited about. Uh, coming down the pike so i appreciate you very much well thank you Heath. uh we uh, appreciate your your support uh you're you're pre pretty uh well educated uh, in move all things uh, related to movies so we we uh, appreciate it Well, there you have it, guys. Isn't that a fascinating conversation? As as a fan of the golden age of Hollywood, I can't think of many companies that have been so closely associated with that sort of thing for as long as they have. Uh, but I'm such, you know, I'm such a Westerns fan. I'm such a Serials fan. VCI has had the stamp on so many of those things. You know, I did a video about B-Westerns, uh, and no company has been friendlier to B-Westerns than VCI. Same with Serials. You heard yourself over 100 Serials across the years. That's huge. And the fact that Flash Gordon is being eyed for restoration from the high, the best film elements with the highest scans, so, so exciting. Again, links in the description. Please rate, review, subscribe. Give us thumbs ups. Give us positive engagements. Share it. Tell, tell, tell anybody that you know who enjoys movies. So I'm just going to wrap this one up here, but we will see you again very, very soon with another interesting conversation, probably an interview with somebody that you're not going to want to miss. Thank you so much for being here. Take care. Until next time, I will catch you later.